In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create CloudWatch alarms for CloudTrail events. And specifically, I'm going to focus on a scenario that you might see on the security specialty exam. How to monitor for usage of the root account in your AWS account. So the first thing that I need to do is go to CloudTrail. And I'm going to create a trail and so you can see I currently don't have any trails created. I'm going to create a new trail. And I'm just going to call it Rick Cresci Trail. I'm going to use an existing S3 bucket that I've already created called Rick Cresci Cloud Trail. So I'll choose that existing bucket. I'm going to disable KMS encryption here. And then under CloudWatch Logs, here's the key part of this demo. I need to push all of these cloud trail logs to CloudWatch so that CloudWatch can potentially generate alarms based on the events occurring in this trail. So I'm going to create a new CloudWatch log group. I'm just going to call it Rick Cresci Log Group and I'm going to choose new here. And I'm going to create a new IAM role as well. I'm just going to call my new role Rick Cresci Cloud Trail role and I'll go ahead and click next here. I want management events because specifically I'm looking for management events related to the root account. So I'll just choose management events here and I'll leave read and write both checks. I'll click next and that should be everything. So let's create this trail. So now my trail is created and I can see that everything from this trail is going to be forwarded to a CloudWatch logs log group. Now there's one final thing I just want to point out here in this trail that I've created. Notice the CloudWatch logs configuration and I've got my log group here. I've also got my I am role here. And so we have to have this I am role identified. And this is what allows CloudTrail to push all these events to CloudWatch logs. Okay, so now we're all done with the CloudTrail part of this configuration. Let's browse over to the CloudWatch dashboard. And on the left here, I'm going to click on Log Groups. And there's the log group that I just created, Rick Cresci Log Group. So let's click on this log group. And within the log group, I'm going to click on the metric filters tab. So I'm going to create a new metric filter and I'm going to insert a filter pattern in here. So here I've put in the filter pattern for root. And if you're looking for this filter pattern, you'll see a link on the screen here. You can find this filter pattern by using the link shown. And so I'm just going to use the rest of these default settings here and I'll click next. And so I'm going to call my filter Rick Cresci cloud trail metric dash root. And the rest of the settings I'm choosing here are going to be based on the document that I shared and you can see the URL for that document on your screen. So my metric namespace is going to be cloud trail metrics. My metric name is going to be root account usage count and my metric value is going to be one. And then I'll go ahead and scroll down here and click on next. And then I'll click on create metric filter. And so here we can see my metric filter has been created. So now I'll scroll down here. Here's my metric filter. I'm just going to click on the little checkbox next to it and I'll choose create alarm. And so now I want to create an alarm based on this metric filter. So I'm going to create a new alarm. And just like the documentation shows, the metric name is going to be root account usage count. The statistic is going to be a sum. The monitoring period is going to be five minutes. And it's the root account usage count. And so if this number is greater than or equal to one, I want to trigger this alarm. So the way we set up this metric filter was that if root account usage was detected, the value was one. 
So now if that value equals one or more, it's going to trigger this alarm. And so I'll go ahead and click on next here. And now I can choose my alarm actions. And if this alarm gets triggered, what I want to do is have it send a message to an SNS topic. So I'm just going to pick my SNS topic from the list here and have it send me an email if this alarm gets triggered. I don't need any auto scaling actions or any EC2 actions or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on next here. And I'll give the alarm a name. And I'm going to just continue to follow the documentation. So I'm going to call the alarm root account usage. And I'm not going to give it a description. I'll go ahead and click on next. And here we can see a nice little summary of exactly what I've configured for this alarm. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on create alarm. And now I am done. So my alarm has been successfully created at this point. So what I've just covered is what you really need to know for the exam, how to set up this alarm, how to get the CloudTrail logs into CloudWatch. And so if you can understand the steps that I've already gone through, you'll be fine for the exam. But now let's take it a step further here. I'm going to go ahead and sign out of my AWS account and I'm going to go ahead and log back in and I am logging in as the root user. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And so, yeah, now I've signed in as the root user. Let's go to CloudWatch and take a look at my alarms. And so here in CloudWatch, I am going to all alarms and we can see that my root account usage alarm is currently in the state of in alarm. So it looks like it's working. Let's click on this alarm and check it out. And so, yeah, the status of this alarm is it is currently in alarm. Now this can get a little confusing because you might come to this alarm and see it say insufficient data. And if that's the case, there's a couple of potential causes. I'm going to go through the first one, which is very simple here. And then in a minute, we'll look at a more complex scenario. But if your alarm says insufficient data, let's go down to the history of this alarm here. And let's look at all of the alarm state changes that have occurred. And you can see here I created my alarm and then shortly after that I logged in as root and then within a few minutes the alarm updated to in alarm and it invoked my SNS topic and sent me an email. But then about five minutes later it switched back from in alarm to insufficient data because there was a time period where I didn't log in as root and so the count went back down to zero and the status of the alarm changed to insufficient data. But the objective was already accomplished, right? It already sent me that email. The SNS topic was invoked. And then eventually I logged back in as root again. The status of the alarm changed back to in alarm. And again, it invoked that SNS topic and sent me an email. So that's one of the reasons why you may see the alarm status say insufficient data is simply we haven't logged in as root over the last five minutes or so and so the alarm changes back to the insufficient data state there is one other potential cause here and it has to do with i am permissions and this worked perfectly for me but the last time around that i tried this which was a couple of years ago it didn't work so good and i had to make some changes so i've included that troubleshooting process as part of this video and if you continue to watch this video, you'll see me go through that troubleshooting process. So if you want to see that more in-depth look, feel free to continue to watch. So here's my list of alarms in CloudWatch. You can see that the root account usage alarm currently has insufficient data. Basically meaning, hey, it needs a little bit more time. I set this to happen up once every five minutes. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this alarm. And we'll wait about five minutes and then I'll refresh my screen and we'll see if we can get this alarm to trigger. So after waiting about 30 minutes, I still had insufficient data for this alarm. And as you can see, I still do have insufficient data for this alarm. So something's not working properly. 
So what I did was I went over here to CloudWatch Logs and I took a look at my log groups. And specifically, I want to take a look at this CloudTrail default log group. And what you should see in here is an automatically created log stream. If that isn't showing up, odds are pretty good that your problem is related to your CloudTrail configuration. So I actually just fixed this. And the way that I fixed it is I actually went to CloudTrail. So let's go back to CloudTrail, go to my trail. And under my trail, you can see here for CloudWatch logs, it's using this role. And part of this role is going to allow CloudTrail to create a stream. Right, so let's take a quick look at this role. I'm going to go to IAM. And I'm going to take a look at my roles. Here's the role that was automatically created. So you can see here what it automatically came with was this policy here that allows it to create a log stream and put events into that log stream. And it wasn't working. For some reason, it can't create the log stream. And I didn't want to spend too much time troubleshooting it, but I did want to determine, is it the I am role that was creating my problem? And so what I did was, for troubleshooting purposes, I added administrator access to this role. And almost immediately in CloudWatch, this new log stream was created. So now within CloudWatch in my log group, the log stream that I needed was created and now it's starting to pump events into this log stream. And you may have noticed, look at this, one of my alarms has actually been triggered, my root account usage alarm. So it's working. I'm not going to spend the time to troubleshoot that I am role. There's obviously something wrong with it. But what I did temporarily as a workaround was I gave that role full admin privileges. So actually I'm going to back out some of the things that I've done in this lab just to clean up. In CloudWatch, I'm going to delete the alarm that I created. So that alarm is now deleted. I'm going to go to my log groups and I'm going to delete the log group that was created as well. So I'll just type in the word delete and hit the delete button. And then I'm going to just go to cloud trail as well. And within the cloud trail console, I'm going to clean up after myself there as well. I'm going to go to my trails and on this Rick Cresci trail, I'm going to just go to this CloudWatch logs configuration and I'm going to delete the CloudWatch logs configuration. So I'm going to leave my trail running and I'm going to not get rid of that at this point because I may want to take a look at some of my logs as we get further into the course. Uh, but the one final thing that I did want to show you was that I did get a notification to my email. So we configured SNS to give us these notifications. And when I actually went in and logged in as root, I did get that notification. So that's good. My SNS notifications were working properly. When that alarm was triggered, it sent a notification to my SNS topic. And one final cleanup step that I also need to accomplish here, I'm going to go to IAM. I'm going to go to roles. And especially now that I've given this role administrator access, I want to make sure that I delete this IAM role that was created as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that IAM role.